Today we're going to be looking at a video by Kurtz Gazat called Time, the History and Future of Everything. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Foles. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's get right into it. Time makes sense in small pieces. But when you look at huge stretches of time, it's almost impossible to wrap your head around things. So let's start small with minutes, hours, days. Could start even smaller. Uh, nuclear reactions can happen on the order of shakes, or a shake is 10 nanoseconds or 10 to the minus 8 seconds. So when you see a nuclear blast, by the time you actually see it and the beam of light travels far enough to reach your eyes, the reaction was ancient history. It's fascinating how fast something like that can happen, as well as events such as so fission, fusion, decay chains. It takes a long time for something to decay. It, it can take a long time for something to decay, or it can be almost instantaneous. That one has a wide range, but the actual uh, movement of the particles or energy in the case of gamma rays and x-rays is very, very fast. So it's going to start us off a little bit smaller scale than even a second. You probably spent the last 24 hours mostly sleeping and working, and you probably wasted a good chunk of yesterday on the internet. <laughs> hey, it's never a waste when you're watching some good videos. Days become weeks, weeks become months, and then we have a year. Let's look at 2017. France started to train eagles to hunt terrorist drones. A Czech nuclear power plant held a bikini contest to pick their new intern. Where was I in 2017 missing this? Oh, I was in license class getting my senior reactor operator license, so I was more or less in a vortex. Okay, well there you have it. <laughs> also, I just realized this video is over five years old. People on the internet made a challenge out of eating bleach. You know, the oh, usual no. stuff. Let's go back further. A kid born in the first year of the 21st century is 18 years old now. But the century is still young, even if you're not. <laughs> uh, Star Wars Episode 7. Not a fan. It was largely shaped by the attacks on 9-11, which led to the war in Afghanistan and the invasion of Iraq. In March 2011, the Syrian civil war began and is still ongoing after seven years. And if this were made today, we'd be talking about Ukraine. Most of us were born in the 20th century, which had the two most devastating wars in human history and the Cold War. Interesting, how many of you watching this video now were not born in the 20th century? I know looking at a lot of my video demographics, a lot of them are in the 18 to 24 range, which kind of... Which most of that is not 20th century as of right now. For the first time ever, we could destroy ourselves with nuclear weapons, and we almost did. Uh, not quite. We can do a lot of damage though, you don't want to stress test it, but I go into, I go into more detail in some of my other weapons videos about how we wouldn't actually get there. I'll pin a comment down below if you're interested to find out why we actually wouldn't, but it's still a very bad idea. <laughs> We also had a space race and left Earth for the first time. The internet was also invented, which led to memes, but also to Facebook and Twitter. So all in all, we're not sure if this was a good development. The average human lives about 79 years, which covers a good chunk of recent history. Is that now or is that 20th century? That's, that's probably about now. Because yeah, some of the 20th century probably wasn't nearly that long. The oldest living person on Earth is currently Salino Jaramillo, who was born in 1896, which- Highly doubt that person's still around now. ...is that his birth was closer to Napoleon ruling Europe than to the current day. <laughs> Only 250 years ago, the Industrial Revolution turned the world into a progress machine. Farmers became workers and knowledge became easier to distribute. Around this time, we started the progress that is causing climate change today. I got a lot of comments in my Bill Wirtz video um, when I suggested the idea of what if we brought nuclear back pre-industrial. I know we're missing a lot of uh, supporting technologies to really make nuclear as amazing as it was back then, but I just still think that would be so cool. 
just skipping all of those awkward energy production phases such as coal and just going straight to something really, really extraordinary. Long ago, actually, the theory of evolution changed how we saw ourselves and the world we live in. Newton wrote down his theory of gravity. We discovered distant stars and very close bacteria. The 15th century was very eventful. Columbus's discovery of America <laughs> the and the fall of Constantinople marked the end of the Middle Ages. War was all the rage in the Middle Ages, but the number one killer was disease. The Black Plague killed every third European in just six years. I remember the expression, avoid it like the plague, but considering we just had COVID and people didn't necessarily avoid that, that's, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure that that expression really holds up anymore. 2,000 years ago, we set the arbitrary year one of our calendar that most of the world follows today. But to a Roman, the world was already ancient. The Great Pyramids were constructed 4,500 years ago. So to a Roman, the pyramids were older than the Romans are to us today. So long ago that there were still living mammoths on Earth. Wow, I, I actually didn't realize that. I thought they went extinct before the pyramids were built. A lot of history happened before that even. Around 7,000 years ago, humans began writing things down. About 12,000 years ago, human organization exploded. We built our first temple, and around the world, mankind began farming, which enabled the rise of larger communities. Our dominance over planet Earth really begins here. Okay. Yeah, I think I've, I've seen this before on some other of Kurt's Gazette stuff. That's why they would call the year so the year right now being 2023 they would call it 12,023 since that's during the human era period this would be 12,023 he homo sapiens sapiens the modern human evolved at least 200,000 years ago 50,000 years ago the cognitive revolution expanded our minds and innovation Back then, we shared Earth with at least five other human species that either died out yeah. or were killed by us. At least two million years ago, our ancestors already had control over fire and constructed tools from wood and stone. And six million years ago, the last common ancestors of chimpanzees and humans existed. So this graph is all of human history. Our close relative Homo erectus survived ten times longer than we have existed. This tiny part Puts it into perspective. is the human era. We have to zoom in a lot to even see your lifetime. <laughs> Still, all of human history is not that long. 65 million years ago, the age of the dinosaurs ended in an enormous explosion. The dinosaurs ruled the Earth for over 165 million years, 27 times as long as all humans. That's so long that it means a T-Rex that lived 65 million years ago is closer to us today than to a live Stegosaurus. A lot of misconceptions out there about a T-Rex fighting a Stegosaurus. <laughs> Dinosaurs in the form of mighty chickens are still around yes. today. Animal life on this planet... So I guess that the dinosaurs really ever end because now we just, we just eat them. ...did 600 million years ago. The earliest animals were fish, and other small, simple sea creatures. Then came insects, then reptiles, and finally, around 200 million years ago, mammals joined the party. Life itself began much further back. There is evidence that it appeared up to 4.1 billion years ago. Single For at least 3.5 billion years, life consisted only of single-celled organisms. 4.5 billion years ago, the sun was born from a gigantic imploding gas cloud. 60 million years later, Earth formed. In it's interesting to see that the Earth's not that much younger than the Sun when you look at the scale uh, this big on the order of billions of years. In those early years, frequent bombardment by comets and asteroids supplied the Earth with large oceans. But as far as the whole universe goes, our solar system is pretty new. One thing is where, so where you get a lot of the heavy elements like uranium come from is... It's going to be uh, stardust from supernovas because stars by themselves are only going to go up to about iron in terms of how much they can 
do by uh, nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion just simply isn't abundant enough to create something that heavy. So there you go, bigger explosions, supernovas, kilonovas, where neutron stars collide into each other. That's how you get all that, st all the super heavy elements travel through space, space dust, collapse into planetary nebulas, and then, hey, we have uranium on Earth. 13.75 billion years ago, the universe was born, and about half a billion years later, our own galaxy formed from billions of stars. But what came before the Big Bang? The truth is, we don't know, and maybe we never will. <laughs> and there you have it, the past. Now let's take a look at what we know about the future. That's cool. I like, I like them. Just this very simple um, bar type timeline model to just give you a sense of scale. Sweet and to the point. In roughly one billion years, the sun will be so hot that life on Earth becomes impossible. Okay, so we're immediately going way out there. We're not just looking, you know, a few years from now to see, hey, if we, if nuclear fusion really is just 20 years away for us here on Earth. <laughs> All right, sure. Fast forward a billion. The death of the sun four billion years later marks the end of life in the solar system. If we want to have a chance to survive, we need to have ventured to the stars. Do you think we can pull this off? I think we could. A billion years is a long time. And what happens after that? In the next 100 billion years, most of the bigger stars around will die. The universe becomes dimmer and dimmer, illuminated only by smaller red and white dwarfs. But they too will eventually burn out, and one day, the last star in the universe will die. The universe will turn dark, and at some point, even black holes will evaporate and die. When they do... That takes, depending on the size of the black hole, that takes 10 to the 100th power years, and possibly longer. The universe will reach its final stage, heat death. Nothing changes anymore, the universe is dead. Forever. <laughs> now, you're feeling some pretty weird heat death, uh, what most people think of when they think of entropy and uh, second law thermodynamics. Things right now, aren't you? We are too. It's only natural. The good news is, this is all far, far away. The only time that actually matters is now. That's right. That cute girl or boy you like, ask them out. <laughs> time is precious. That's right. Absolutely go for it. And hey, <laughs> They say yes, great. If they say no, great. Matters is you went for it. Make it count. That was good. Just a nice little high level thing. The bit about the future was a bit. <laughs> I can see that I've noticed a few comments on Kurtz Kazat theme videos is like, here comes the existential dread time. But I actually thought that one was pretty tame, at least compared to the floating brain one. I'll pin that one down below too. <laughs> they think you're. You're really just a floating brain, but it's all interesting thought experiments, and I've I really appreciate their videos and how simple they explain everything. That's um, that's always really good. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.